What is up guys, Kimo Cristalis here, and in this video we're gonna be going into some of the marketing uses of ChatGPT. So super quick, without a elongated introduction, ChatGPT is basically a chat variation of GPT-3. It's free to access, right? To essentially access it, the only thing that you need to do is basically create a quick account on open.ai. A link for that is in the description below, and it's free, right? There's no limitation on credits. There's a couple of restrictions with regards to what you can ask for, but for 99.99% .99 of marketing use cases, you won't have any problem whatsoever. So in this video, we're going to be going over a couple of marketing use cases such as uh, blog articles, SEO, meta descriptions, Facebook ad copies, Google ad copies, uh, catchy company names, etc. And I'll also be showing one of the use cases of DALI2 as well. I'll be making another video for that a little bit later on. But without a further ado, let's kick it off. So I've already entered all the prompts just to basically show you guys to avoid the you watching me type and basically mention the prompts out loud because there's no need for that. And first example is give me a 600 word blog article on the subject of marketing using chat bots. That's it. Basically very simple. Uh, you enter that prompt and then chat GPT essentially gives you a blog article of 600 words on the topic of marketing using chatbots. So you can see it's right here. Chatbots have become an increasingly popular tool for businesses to reach and interact with their customers. These automated programs can be integrated into websites, social media platforms, and messaging apps. Super, super simple. 600 words. If you do the, uh, if you do the word counter, right, you should essentially hit 600. A lot of you growth hackers, a lot of you advanced marketers are basically thinking, okay, that's it. Why would I ever, ever write an SEO article again to basically rank on a high competitive keyword if chat GPT can basically do it for me? for free, right? And there's two points to this. Number one is, I wonder how the paid AI text generation solutions will basically survive on the market considering that ChatGPT is free. And the second point, which is the answer to the first question of should I use this for SEO purposes is yes, but be careful. From my research, I basically discovered that OpenAI is releasing a cryptographic key in its text that it will make available to big entities. And they might have already made it available to big entities like Google, like Bing, etc., so that they they can spot AI generated text and basically derank it when it comes to Google listings or at least partially penalize it as a, in, in the, in terms of, let's say, including it on page three results, as opposed to page one, because they understand the, uh, the potential consequences of AI and AI text generators. So do it at your own risk. I don't necessarily recommend that you do do it because it could penalize you in the future. And when it comes to Google and black hat SEO tactics, we all know that Google constantly rolls out updates that essentially penalize people that have done black hat SEO tactics in the past. And this essentially penalizes your search results. So if you have a long-term vision with regards to your SEO strategy, definitely not recommended. When it comes to, let's say, using chat GPT for the creation of partial text or the creation of AI generated SEO meta descriptions, I don't think that's gonna be a problem. If it will be uh, very unexpected, and I think the penalization there would be relatively small. But if you use it for entire blocks of text of like 1,500 words, there could be consequences. Another use case is the SEO meta description. So let's say you just wrote an article, right? Uh, you use chat GPT to essentially eradicate your writer's block and you had a good stream of ideas with regards to what you wanted to write. And you created a hybrid article that was hybridly created by AI generated text. Plus you added your own input and it's, you know, 60, 40, 60% is your work. 40% is the AI's work. And then you basically want to also create an SEO meta description just to make sure that there is a, uh, a meta description right under the title that fits to the article itself. You essentially enter a prompt, a prompt, prompt is the text that you input into chat GPT saying, can you summarize the above text for an SEO meta description? And so it does. You might need to edit it because there are a couple of best practices with regards to the number of words that you can include in an SEO meta description. It's not fact, it's not a rule, but it's just the best practice. But there it is. Chatbots can provide businesses with instant personalized introductions, right? And targeted messaging to improve customer satisfaction and loyalty. Chatbots can also streamline customer service and be integrated into various platforms. I'd remove all the rest and I'd basically include like read on to learn how you can apply chatbots to your business. Simple as that. Another example, right? The LE5 example, and this is contextual and it's something that's really big on platforms like Reddit. There, there's an entire explain like I'm five LE5 subreddit or complicated topics that you'd like to understand. And a example of one is, can you give me an explanation of thermodynamics that a five-year-old would understand? Now, thermodynamics, 
can be a pretty complicated concept, especially when you add like advanced physics into the whole play itself. But if you ask ChatGPT for a simple explanation that a five-year-old with basic English would understand, this is what it gives. Thermodynamics is a study of heat, how it moves. Heat is a type of energy that can be transferred from one place to another. For example, if you touch a hot stove, heat will be transferred from the stove to your hand. You'll feel it getting warmer. Very, very simple concepts that ChatGPT knows that a five-year-old would understand based on the average comprehension of the English language of an average five-year-old. So using simple words, simple sentences, short sentences, short paragraphs, etc., with simple concepts. Then another one, and this is a pretty interesting one. So Twitter threads have been like the craze of Twitter content marketing for the past year right now. Like everybody you know that's growing on Twitter, they're using threads to some degree or another. The reason as to why they use threads is because it essentially games the algorithm. If you create a Twitter post saying how I generated $1 million in less than 60 days, and it's just a tweet, and within the tweet, you also include the explanation, people just scroll, read it and then move on. Now, if you create a Twitter thread with a hook, just like across TikTok, across, sh across short form content and even long form content, if you create a hook attached to it, the hook would be, here's how I generated $1 million in 60 days, read on, and then uh, an image of a Stripe account showing the income, right? Or the revenue itself, people will click on the post if they're interested. This will trick the Twitter algorithm into thinking that there's engagement, when in reality there is, it isn't necessarily a trick, it's a fact. Twitter then boosts the content further to look alike audience or to your follower base in hopes of them also being interested. So Twitter threads. Now you can use chat GPT for the formation and the creation of Twitter threads. They're not perfect, right? None of this is essentially fully perfect or fully, you know, a 10 out of 10 proof, but it gives you the ability to, again, as I mentioned, eradicate your writer's block, understand the formatting of the thread itself, the thread style, and just help you and assist you with thinking and with forming a Twitter thread that has the potential of becoming sort of viral. So can you create a Twitter, a viral Twitter thread on why email marketing is important? You don't need to include viral. If you just include Twitter thread, it'll still spew the same thing. Sure, here's a potential Twitter thread on the importance of email marketing. So first tweet, second tweet, third tweet, all the way down to the last one, right? Pretty simple. This wouldn't go viral because there's no hook, right? And the information isn't like crazy. You need to be a human to understand what's gonna kick off, but it's pretty good nonetheless. Another one, can you create a Facebook ad copy for a cat clicker? Now, the reason as to why I included a cat clicker is because a cat clicker is something that essentially a somebody within a certain niche would understand, right? So if you just hire, let's say somebody on Fiverr right now that's not within the niche, right? That, that's never trained a pet before or anything of that sort, they really wouldn't be able to give you a ad copy that's so relevant to what you're selling. Chat GPT though is, right? So, and this is actually a relatively good ad copy. Like I would test this out with a couple of variations from my side as well. Like I'd add the typical Facebook ad bullet points, the graphic as well, which you can't, Chat GPT can't do for you because it's it's a text generator, the graphic as well, etc. But if you read it, attention cat lovers, are you tired of trying to get your feline friend's attention with toys that just don't cut it? Our cat clicker is here to save the day. That's honestly pretty good. Our cat clicker is designed to specific is designed specifically to capture your cat's attention, keep them engaged with a simple click and treat training method. You can teach your cat new tricks and keep them entertained for hours on end. Your typical Facebook ad copy guy that didn't research the industry wouldn't be able to create content like this. This is a fact. So this is honestly pretty good. I would test this out. Can you create a Google ad copy for a cat clicker, right? So it gives you the title plus some descriptions, get your cat's attention with a simple quality, a uh, high quality cat clicker. And then you could include these as like commas sort of also pretty good, right? Compact design for home or on the go use. Okay, it's pretty all right. Honestly, pretty good. You can even create it to create website. You can use it to create website copy as well, which is an example that I've seen other people basically showcase. So why repeat myself? And another one is, can you give me catchy company names for a company selling used cars, right? So basically that. Sure, here are a few potential company names for a company selling used cars, second chance auto sales, pre-owned perfection, the used car outlet, etc. Now, if you use this in conjunction with a tool like Dali, which is another tool of OpenAI, you also get a couple of generations of potential logos that you can have. Now, of course, you'd have to mod uh, modify the text itself in something like Photoshop or Canva, but it's a pretty good tool set to have. All in all, the potential of this is absolutely huge. And I am very, very interested in people that are basically considering this as an alternative to even things as big and as established as search engines, because this could be a search engine uh, for any information that you're looking for. If you just enter it into chat GPT, it can give you a, a, a an explanation and a quick breakdown of what you can use. And I was even watching a video of somebody use it to find out what type of TV to buy, right? It can give you the exact product, but it can tell you what to look for. So the potential of this is absolutely huge. There's a lot of marketing use cases. If you just use the ones that I've mentioned right now, you'll have a, an edge in the marketing, especially when it comes 
down to thinking and to generating content at an accelerated rate, right? Whether it's articles, whether it's descriptions, whether it's whatever. So definitely a tool worth considering. I've included links to that in the description below. And I've also included a link to our growth hacking blog, which I have launched recently as part of a pilot to increase the SEO results of the growth hacking bootcamp, which I'm going to be releasing more content on later. Everything is in the description below. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Let me know if you're already using it. Uh, if this video has essentially helped you out, subscribe and I'll catch you on the next one.